I decided to do a few videos back to the very very basics this would be for anybody that's starting from scratch and has never done any pouring so I have set up um, the stuff that I purchased from the dollar store and from Walmart and I'm going to kind of go through everything really quickly for the beginners and this was still about 50 bucks so it's not cheap to just get the basics but you might could scrimp on a few things and so I'm going to quickly go through everything and I did get Elmer's glue this time even though I do ne I never use Elmer's glue in my regular pours I got it today to try because everybody else uses it and I really just prefer Floetrol it's just safer to use because you it's proven to be a good quality product Elmer's glue is just glue and if you want to sell a painting down the road I'm just not so thrilled with having glue in my painting to sell so I would typically use Floetrol. I bought five bottles of glue at $1.50 a piece at the dollar store. So that is about uh, $7 or something like that. And you can get a quart of Floetrol at Lowe's or Home Depot for $7. So I'm just suggesting you try Floetrol instead of glue. I have no idea how this is going to pour today because I never use glue. But what I did is a one-to-one -one ratio of glue to paint, and I'm using all apple barrel colors today pretty much. So I'm going to go through the colors real quickly. Uh, Lagone, Lug Laguna, <laughs> Palm Leaf, Holly Branch, Wild Iris, Royal Violet, Admiral Blue, Bright Blue, Bright Magenta, Bright Red, and I try to get bright colors, can you tell? Yellow, Harvest Orange, and I got a big bottle of uh, white and a big bottle of black even though I just have a little bit of black mixed up. So everything is one to one ratio and then I had water so I have my little cup here of extra water and I've mixed everything up and added the water to get to the right consistency and the consistency you want is kinda like warm honey pouring off of your stick. So you see how it's a steady stream, it's not drippy like real watery and it doesn't stick to my stick like peanut butter or say really thick yogurt so it comes off in a steady stream that's that's what you want it to do I have one more color that I have not mixed just so you can see me mix it from scratch this is one of the, the deeper green so I've got about an ounce of paint these are three ounce bathroom cups so I'm adding pretty much an ounce of color and about an ounce of glue and then I add water after I have totally stirred up the color and the glue together that's when I add water and I did mix up my whole big eight ounce bottle of white I, I mixed it all up so I've got some in a cup and some in a 12 ounce squeeze bottle so I got the squeeze bottle at the dollar store. It's very flimsy. I have an Amazon link below my videos that has better quality bottles than these. They have this, these dollar store ones have this big wide opening. The other squeeze bottles I have on Amazon are, um, they have a finer point at the end of it and they have screw on lids. They're a sturdier plastic and they do not leak at all. So I prefer those, but I wanted to show you this totally for a beginner's pour just so you could have an example of how people start with, with the really basics. And um, I'm using puppy pad on the table, which I got a 14 pack of puppy pads for about four or five dollars. But you can use a dollar general uh, 
any dollar store plastic tablecloth, which you know is usually about a dollar. You can use that to pour on, and actually the paint will peel off of it pretty easily. So there is the consistency that I want. Creamy, but still running off my stick in a steady stream. That's the right consistency. I also mixed up some metallics, which are going to be in a separate video. Rose gold, antique copper, those are folk art. And then these came from Dollar General. They're crafter's closet, gold, and silver. The silver's nice. The gold looks pretty bland. But so does, so does the rose gold from Folk Art. It looks pretty bland, too. I'm not impressed with the metallics. But that will be a different pour, so I'm going to move those cups aside. And I'm going to use black probably with that and do something... And yeah, I got the stir sticks. Uh, these are like craft sticks. There's two, two of these packed together for about a, a buck at the dollar store. Yeah, I got the three ounce cups to mix all of my paints in. Uh, these are three ounce bathroom cups. Got them at Walmart. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for sales. It's called OGX is the brand. Coconut Milk anti Rakage Serum. It is a hair product. It comes in the hair section at Walmart, some drugstores, maybe Target, and if, if it all else fails, you can order it online on Amazon in my link below. The key ingredient at the beginning of the ingredients list is dimethicone. That is what you want. Okay? So with OGX, this bottle will last you a year. It, it just goes a long way. You only want, I'm not going to push down totally, I'm just going to slightly press and do a drop in each cup. It's hard to squeeze it and get just a drop. You can also, you can also unscrew it. It smells wonderful. And you can drip a drop off the end of the, dri the dripper thingy, you know, the squeeze thingy. You can do a drop that way. I'm not. I'm actually not putting any in the black or white. It smells so good though. And then I'm going to just stir a few times, not many times, just a few. And every so often, I wipe my stick off. If Sometimes I'll share the sticks between the colors, but you want to share them in like colors that are you know, similar to the other color you're using. And if it's not close to the color, then wipe it off or get a clean stick to um, stir the next color. Because you don't want to dirty up your color with another color that does not work with it. Like, I can put the yellow into the green because that's going to go away, like, immediately. And, um, so I'm just making sure I stir the OGX in a few times. That's all. I am doing this from home because we are heading out of town today to go on a camping trip. And I don't have my paints and my setup from home here anymore since I have my studio. So this, I'm doing it on my kitchen table again. And um, I've got, I'm doing it with my cell phone. So I'm not sure how the quality will be. I'm not sure if I'll be in focus because I've got my phone kind of in a precarious spot right now. Ooh, that OGX smells good. Okay, so I'm going to remove my puppy pads. I, like I said, I had to buy glue. I bought um, a pack of dollar gloves. So they're probably, they're probably made larger, and they are, so they're loose on my hands. I like to have nice, tight gloves, but these are loose because they're just, they were just like a four pack of gloves that were at the dollar store. Oh, and I also got six canvas panels. 
So here is, uh, I got eight by tens. And I think these are 11 by 16 canvas panels, which typically, if you um, put too much paint on them, they will warp. But the thing about the warping is if they warp, once they're totally, totally dry, you can kind of bend them and manipulate them again to get them straight. You can place a book, you know, put maybe like a piece of parchment paper down over the painting and then a heavy book and let it sit for a while. And also if you just put it back in a frame that's the correct size, then you will, you'll be able to uh, straighten the board back out. So one of the things I tell people when you're first starting to do acrylic pouring, if you don't really know what color choices to make, you never can really go wrong if you just use one color or so with white and black. So I'm gonna start this first one on the eight, an eight by 10. And since it's a canvas panel, I'm gonna put four cups down and that'll keep it up off the table. So that the you know the paint can drip down if it needs to that kind of thing. I think I'm in frame. I can't really tell. <laughs> I'm not used to filming from this angle. So I only need three ounces of paint for an eight by ten canvas. So I'm going to get just a three ounce cup, and I'm just going to do this. I'm going to use what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red and the magenta and black and white just to show you how simple a pour can be just with white and black. So I'm going to put a little bit of white in my cup, then a little bit of red, and I'll put a tiny bit of black and you don't need much black because black is really strong. Then I'll do, well, I'll do a white again. Then I do a good bit of the hot pink color. And I dripped on the canvas, but that's okay. Now I'm going to put red again. Maybe just dribble with my stick a little bit of black and a little bit of white and that should be good. I've got a full cup. So what I'm going to do, oh and I got push pins too. They were about a dollar. Typically if you had a canvas you would put push pins on the underside of it to uh, keep it off, off the table but because this is a canvas board I'm just lifting it up using the cups. So I'm going to take this, take my canvas panel, flip it over, put it back on the cups, and then I've got a push pin, and I like when I do a flip cup to poke a few holes and that releases that paint. So you can kind of see the cup moving on its own. It'll move just a little bit because the pressure was released inside the cup. I do not have a heat gun or a torch because I'm not at my studio where everything is. Oops. For some reason it wants to go this way. I don't know if my, my table's on a downward slope apparently. So typically the cells would really be popping out. If I, if I had used Floetrol, these cells would really be popping. Because I used glue, I don't know if that's why it's not really doing anything. I have no idea.
People ask if they can use a blow dryer. No, you cannot because it will blow your paint off the canvas and it will it'll be way too much air on the surface and it will start to dry the surface and then your paint underneath is still wet. So you don't want to use a blow dryer. You can blow on it with your breath just to pop some air bubbles and that's what I did. And now the cells are starting to come out. So, at least there's some cells popping out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and tilt. And this is responding so differently than it would if I had used Floetrol. I'm just telling you, the glue is not responding at all like Floetrol does with your colors and paints. So like I said, I still highly recommend Floetrol instead of glue. So the hot, the magenta color came out really strong and the red did not come out as strong. And I didn't use as, I used more of the magenta than I did the red. So I'm just letting this kind of drift around on the canvas. Like I said, I cannot tell if I'm really in the frame or not because of the way I've got my camera. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I do have this one streak. Right through here with the red and black. So I'm actually going to tilt it back this way and hopefully stretch that out a little bit. But people ask, why do I not get cells? Well, if you use OGX, you're going to get cells. If you use glue, maybe you're not going to get as many cells. So that's the first one, and here it is. And it would have been, if I'd have used more red and less hot pink, it would have been even more gorgeous. I was afraid to use too much black, but I, pro I probably could have used a little more black, but there's that one. 